Last time on Shadow Peace, the role-playing session of Sanji and Magnus ended and things got a bit more serious. Not only did Sanji almost lose the battle, but he revealed his deepest desires to an opponent that he just met recently. A lot of things are riding on this battle and the Charlotte husband and student of the Dark Messiah won't give up after he so generously received a second chance from Magnus. Showing once again how much of a kickmaster he is, Sanji attacked his opponent with all kinds of high-level techniques before using his second ultimate technique, a skill directly taken from his teacher and then adjusted to fit into his personal fighting style, the Maximum Magni Magnum, a technique first seen when Absalom opened the Titan's Gate at the entrance of Elba. After getting hit, even the tough giant Magnus is holding his stomach in pain. Obviously Sanji did not pack the same amount of power as the Great Dark Messiah, but it was still an incredibly powerful attack. Magnus stands there, a bit hunched over, recovering from the attack. Such an opportunity should not be missed. The fighting cook does another series of low kicks and actually manages to bring the other semi-finalist of the Winter Solstice Festival tournament to his knees. But he doesn't stop there. With his opponent's moment of weakness, he has to strike, gathering force by rapidly spinning and then using the front of the foot to hit the enemy head, not once, not twice, but three times. The quarter giant first gets hit from the right, then the left, and then from behind. You can train as much as you want, but strengthening your head, especially internally, is almost impossible. This third stage roundhouse kick aims at the opponent's brain with the first and second kick, and normally finishes them off with the third, but that's only the case in a battle between people with the endurance of a normal human, and in this tournament, no one is normal, and only Sanji is human, well, genetically enhanced. He stopped moving. Magnus stopped moving. Sanji is getting rushed by adrenaline and dopamine at the same time, but he can't allow his opponent to get back up. There's only one option left for him. One kick after the other, Sanji is also running out of juice, but he succeeds in steadily pushing back the other contender. And then finally, with one last kick, he topples the terrifying axe user over the edge. Compared to all the previous battles, the spectators are left confused. They still cheer for the winner, but the whole acting stuff and then out of nowhere Sanji's comeback just left them baffled. Odin stands up and not only declared the second semi-final for over, but also the second day of the entire tournament. It is already quite late in the night with the moon and stars decorating the sky. The giants quickly disperse as they need to sleep as well to be energetic for the final battle. And after that also the big feast, finally ending the 12th day fast. But most importantly, it has been decided. In the final of the Winter Solstice Festival Tournament, the Sin of Pride of the Fleet of Death, Pyrodine, is going to face off against the Thrillabark affiliate and member of the Big Mom Pirates and Charlotte family, Sweet Cook Sanji. As of this very moment, the captain of the new giant warrior pirates doesn't know of his luck yet, but he did hope to fight against the cook one day. His crew, not including Tyr, are the only giants that know that he is a part of the Big Mom pirates and so also of the Charlotte family. With Maria's and Absalom's quick lecture, they all understood that they shouldn't hate Sanji as he is not responsible for the things that happened in the past, but deep down in their bodies there is still some resentment left and the hatred just doesn't disappear. The Dark Messiah and the other Thriller Bark pirates walk onto the arena to pick up Sanji and congratulate him. His teacher, more than anyone, is filled with satisfaction that Sanji won, but he also understands that some stuff that happened was very odd. The child husband himself can barely stand and his head isn't really clear. Getting all the rest he can is the best case scenario. However, it will be impossible for both of the finalists to recover fully. Whatever the result of their battle might be, it could go very different if both of them were at their respective 100%. Lif is getting carried away home personally by the god of death, Moria. Not many get to have that honor, and here she is just happily snoring and snuggling with him. The rest of the gang is just enjoying the evening wind and also the smell of the night. Brooke especially, because he doesn't even have a nose to smell or skin to feel. Yo! Our princess of death mainly enjoys watching her father be happy. But at the moment, she is the new medical expert because Hogback left the Thrillerbark Pirates. Well, leaving is technically not the right term, he just got left behind on the Wano. So maybe he is alive over there, who knows, maybe you can check in with him later. 
but as the current doctor of the Thrillerbug Pirates, she also has to take care of Sanji. The married pervert may be barely conscious, but his instincts are telling him that a pretty woman is taking care of him, so we all know how Sanji would react to that. The time to rest has finally come. So many battles happened today. Six in total. Hyredin vs. Tyr, Bronya vs. Loki, Magnus vs. Sigurd, Eric vs. Sanji, then in the semi-finals, Hyredin vs. Loki, and finally Magnus vs. Sanji. Giants will talk about these battles for months to come, but what was your favorite battle so far? Tell me in the comments. Woofs, the fourth wall has been weakened after Loki connected different universes together. Gotta be careful about that. Anyway, our pirate group is making themselves on their way to Bronya's home to sleep for a bit. Even if it's only a few hours, that is better than nothing. However, before they are able to leave the area with the arena completely, they get stopped once more by somebody. In front of them, Magnus, the person that just lost against Sanji, is standing there, quite casually. He is alone on this island, so nobody is on Elba to take care of his wounds or just him in general. He must have regained consciousness quite quickly. So, uh, is he doing okay? Asking about his opponent's health, even though he lost. Somebody for sure must have put a lot of virtues into his head. As the quasi-leader, Absalom stands up for a student and actively starts unleashing his conqueror's hockey. The Dark Messiah is on a completely different level compared to the participants of the tournament, and even Magnus can feel that instantly. This pressure, this pressure might even be comparable to what his father could dish out, maybe even stronger, but he is not entirely sure how his father would mash up against the Dark Messiah. Sanji is going to be okay, what do you want from us? With eyes like a predator, he stares at the young giant. The whole reason he left home was to prove his strength. So Absalom showing a bit of his power actually just excites the quarter giants, but that is not why he approached them. I just wanted to say, you deserve the victory, Sanji. You wanted it much more than me, so I thought this was the best way to do it. But those last few attacks, well, they actually really hurt me. So you are strong, you can probably win the finals, I believe in you. Rest well, I will cheer for you tomorrow, fellow Sora warrior of the sea fan. Before the Thriller Bark pirate crew actually could respond again, he already rushed away. Not having met many people in his life did make him a bit socially awkward. This small interaction raises a lot of questions. So did Magnus let Sanji win? Does he have something to gain from that or did he really just do it out of generosity? What is going on in this giant's mind? It just doesn't make any sense to our group of pirates, but they should be a bit grateful. After seeing his performance against Sigurd in the first round, it was clear to everybody that he would be the biggest hurdle to win the tournament. Him just losing on purpose, if that really was the case, helped the Thrillerbug Pirates and Sanji a lot, as now both finalists are part of the Thrillerbug Pirate affiliates. That means the fruit is guaranteed to fall into Moria's hands. A fruit said to have been given to Elbaf by some sort of god. Obviously that caused his interest now that he learned about the origin of his own shadow shadow fruits. There are still so many mysteries out there in the world. And Moria's new dream is to uncover all of these mysteries. First he has to understand more about devil fruits and also learn why the world is like it is in the current era. Staying on Elbaf was a big vacation for him so far. And with the final coming up, there are not that many things left for him to do on this island. So soon, the Thrillerbug Pirates will set sail once again. But first, this is the end of today's episode of Shadow Peace. I hope you enjoyed it. Today was a bit less combat heavy and some other stuff here, but sometimes we also need slower and more relaxing chapters. But don't fret, because the battle between Hyrie and Sanji will come to you very quickly. Once again I have to ask you, what was your favorite fight of the tournament so far? Please tell me in the comments. And I hope I met your expectations with at least some of these battles. And the final will also be quite interesting. I can assure you of that already. But that's all from me for today. All that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro, out. Bye.